Hello, my name is Brian James. I'm a product specialist at Sensible Technologies, and this is Freeform Modeling Plus version 9. The following demonstration will give a brief introduction into how Freeform can be used for facial reconstruction. This field is both forensic in nature and anthropological as well. Um, the skeletal remains give us clues to how a person looked when they were alive, and the forensic artist uses these clues to create a likeness um, based on tissue depth uh, along the surface of the skull. The model that you see on the screen right now is a virtual clay model uh, converted from a polygon file, and that was done in free form. And what that means is that we can feel the model. I currently feeling the model using the phantom desktop device and this creates a parallel to how forensic artists currently do their workflow uh, by hand manually uh, adding clay on a plaster cast of a skull or on the skull itself to create a likeness we're going to do this workflow digitally uh, in freeform and the advantages of this are numerous uh, one is file sharing uh, between peers uh, using the same skull data and comparing their findings. Another is direct output to rapid prototyping machinery uh, and that gives us the ability to create multiple copies of our final work, our final likeness. Um, additionally, uh, the archive of a forensic artist's work uh, will be greatly improved in terms of longevity uh, by the use of a digital workflow, and by the use of Freeform. Uh, and this is going to uh, increase the, the level of work in the field as well as the uh, level of training that is available in the field. Currently, uh, clay models that are made um, will eventually crack and decay, and so the only uh, longevity that they will enjoy is in the form of photographs. Uh, 3D digital files out of Freeform uh, will always be able to go to another RP machine or be shared digitally. Um, the skull that we have on the screen here uh, can be used as a template itself, but I want to keep it intact, so I've made a copy of it um, that I'm going to go down uh, here and activate in our object list, and I'll hide the original. I want to come back to that later. Um, the copy I have uh, here will prove to be very useful in terms of uh, creating both the tissue depth markers but as well it'll give me a starting point for modeling the flesh so I'm going to do that by creating an offset of the uh, the copy here of the skull uh, to one millimeter to its outside and what that's going to allow us to do is uh, tug and carve and push out flesh based on that copy Once the offset has been created, I'm going to uh, be looking at it directly, and you can see that it is uh, quite doughy in nature, and there's some, some uh, wood grain effect here. I'm going to uh, take a smoothing tool as our first step here and do an, uh, about a medium level smooth here on the copy uh, just to smooth it out all at once. And uh, so that's a, an offset of the copy. I'm going to go back to the original. Um, the original dimensions, that is, and uh, let's make the the offset that we just made see-through. Uh, I did that by using the D key on the keyboard to go into what we call dot view, and I'm going to activate that uh, original copy, and I'm, now I'm going to make those tissue depth markers that we were talking about before, and I'm going to use an addition to the tug tool here. It's called show ruler, and this is new in version 9. Uh, what this allows me to do is pull out geometry and haptically snap. That means uh, with the sense of touch, I get uh, restricted to a certain dimension here. So I have predefined this dimension to be 5 millimeters. Um, now, I'm not a forensic artist, so this is simply for uh, educational purposes and, and for the purposes of the demonstration. And uh, different forensic artists uh, have their own charts and their own preferred um, measurements that will give them a, uh, a clue uh, to where to place their markers and how deep the markers should be on the skull. I'm going to go ahead and apply these random tissue depth markers that we've just created. And you can see how fast we were able to create them. And we know now that these represent five millimeters off of the surface. And you can see, uh, you can see them sticking through the, the silhouetted copy there. Uh, we're going to go back and activate that copy. And we're actually going to uh, turn it back on here 
So you can see the tissue depth markers we just created uh, coming off of the surface. At this point, um, this is also uh, similar to how the manual method is done. We can begin to carve out and pull out geometry. So I'm going to go in with a, uh, a smudging tool, which is kind of like your thumb in wax here. I'm going to pop through to the inside, and I'm just going to start to pull out geometry. And you can see I can use that marker as a template as I move along. And so I know when to stop as I'm going along. Um, in areas like the side here, where you can see the mandible, all this, this gaunt area, we obviously want that filled because that's filled by the tissue of the cheek. Um, so that area, we simply just pull material out from the inside. And I'm working from the inside of the model. If I pull sharply out, I pop back out, and I can work from the outside of the model as well. This is just like modeling real clay. The only difference is that we're working digitally, so we have the benefit of uh, multiple undo functions, for instance, and, uh, and iterations um, that might not be possible if we were working uh, strictly um, in the real world with real clay. Uh, one of those benefits is the fact that I can control how hard or soft this clay feels uh, in addition to the size of the tool head um, that I'm using. So I'm changing that with the plus and minus buttons, and I can make the clay feel softer or harder. So if it's very soft, you can see I go right through it quite quickly. So let's undo that. Um, so I typically uh, keep it a little bit harder at this point in the workflow. Um, let's go back here into a, a tug tool and make the tug tool a little bit larger and pull out geometry. Uh, let's turn off that ruler. So we can uh, toggle off the ruler, and you see that we get... Um, more freedom over the movement of that tug tool. So it's very fast and very intuitive to sculpt geometry based on um, this offset of the skull. And we still have the original hidden in the object list, so we're not worried about um, destroying the original data. And here I'm going to go into a, a smoothing tool and just show you uh, further functionality in Freeform that we can just uh, here adjust the smooth level to be a little bit higher and the tool head to be a little bit bigger and go along here and smooth out anywhere that was jagged so very quickly we can shape the geometry using touch uh, the same as the forensic artist currently uses in the real world modeling clay um, this is the general workflow for how a, a skeleton can, in this case a skull, can be used as a template for creating uh, flesh and a likeness of what that person looked like while they were alive. Um, I'm going to hide both of these right now, uh, but first I'm going to display uh, the work that I've done over uh, a few hours uh, to show you the uh, possibility of freeform. Um, given this method. So here I'm going to uh, just hide the tissue depth markers there for a second. And there we have uh, the head, and let's uh, show the original as well so that I can make the, uh, the head that I have modeled based on this skull, this male figure here. I'm going to make him see-through so that you can see the skull beneath. Um, right now I'm going to show you a huge benefit to using Freeform for facial reconstruction and it's, it's similar to those tissue depth markers that we were just talking about. And that's that I have a ruler tool and here I'm specifying piece to piece measurement. Anywhere I touch the active piece of clay, I get a ruler that shoots down, and I'll just rotate around here so you can see, a ruler that shoots down to the underlying piece of clay, in this case the skull, and it gives me a readout in millimeters. So this is this is tissue depth markers over the entire skull. Um, as you model, you can run the ruler along and check against your tissue depth charts to see how you're doing. Uh, you'll see as we go along the uh, cheek here that we, we begin to get much larger depth of tissue where the muscles are along the mandible. And when we come right under the bottom lip here and also um, right on the, the zygomatic bone here, we see that we're getting very close uh, to the actual skull. Uh, if you feel your forehead, you see there's not much there as well. So it, those uh, dimensions can be used as guidelines uh, using this piece-to-piece -piece ruler measurement tool. Um, and that's, that's essentially uh, the workflow that can be utilized in forensic facial reconstruction. Um, what I want to do now is open up a uh, version of the file um, that has a cutaway view, 
and uh, what that's going to show you is the underlying skull uh, as well as the modeled head. Um, I believe in this uh, view here I had finished uh, some hair as well and you can see here that this could be exported as one polygon file and uh, printed out for training purposes as well as um, forensic files. Uh, this is something that I, I haven't seen uh, currently in the, uh, in the field uh, if you had a split view for instance. Um, there are additional tools that we could use to model uh, an even more accurate likeness in Freeform Modeling Plus and uh, one of those is the use of color. Uh, here if we bring up uh, a painting tool and let's uh, get a nice um, even flesh tone here or uh, something for the lips rather. Let's do something uh, a little bit pink and we'll say OK. We can go to these lips here and using an airbrush tool you can see that there's a a little circle here that is displayed so using the plus button I can make that larger and I'm physically just airbrushing paint onto the surface of the model this could be exported as a uh, PLY file or a ZCP file, the ZCorp file format and uh, those file formats hold color data so you could actually print out 3D versions of your painted likeness um, as well as hair so if we go in here and uh, choose choose a brown just off the standard palette here um, right there that'll be good we can go up and uh, use that same technique to paint uh, hair so very uh, very quickly and easily we can add color to this model which is going to improve uh, the likeliness uh, that it would be recognized by a surviving loved one or um, that it is uh, looked at as a realistic representation of the of the person um, that the that the skull is the remains of. So you can see there's a, there's a lot of functionality for freeform in facial reconstruction, and uh, and that was uh, freeform modeling plus version nine. Thank you.